So I thrifted a $40 wedding dress. Here she is. I wasn't allowed to try it on in the thrift store and they don't have returns. So it was really a gamble. The reason I decided to buy it is because it's 100% silk. It looked roughly like it would fit my body. And if it didn't, I would have fun making alterations to it. That's what this video is. I'm gonna see if I can alter this into a party reception dress for my wedding. And if I can't, cool, I lost 40 bucks and I had a good time. If I can, that'd be awesome. My inspiration for this dress, since it is strapless, it has a ball gown at the bottom. It is currently like a dropped waist, but I have some finagling I think I can do to make it just a normal waist. But I'm looking at these Dior strapless kind of party dresses. I'll insert picture somewhere here. And I'm hoping I can do something like that. But we'll see, cause I'm not an amazing sewer. So here's our dress. It's from a design house that isn't around anymore. They did a lot of custom like uh, couture dresses. So it's a really nice quality dress. It has great boning. It has freaking buttons all the way down the back and it has a train. So there's a lot of material to work with. I'm hoping <laughs> that I can make something out of it. This is gonna be a long project. So I'm starting this about a month before my wedding and I'm hoping that I have something by then. So here it is on before I've done anything to it. I'm pretty lucky in the fact that it fits like really well, um, especially for something that I couldn't try on. It is large in the bust. And that's part of my thinking of how I can shift the waist up is that I can hike it up to natural waist and take the boning out of the top and either like fold it over or cut it off and just redo the top part of the dress. <sighs> so doing something like this or just taking it out and shortening the whole thing so that this waist hits a little closer to where my waist is. I don't know how that's gonna go. I know I need to take the boning out though because that's kind of ruining things up here. I think my first step is I do wanna take off this front kind of pattern and then reapply this if I feel like I want it, but I kind of just want a plain dress right now. So let's get started. So it looks like this uh, lace was just like barely added to the dress. Looks like a hand stitch. So I'm just gonna carefully cut those stitches off and then hopefully just peel it off. We'll see. Okay, so I've taken off a little bit of it and it looks like fine underneath. There's a little bit of crinkling on it where there was stitches, but I think that won't be really an issue because I might end up dyeing it or I might end up um, putting other embellishments on. I haven't decided yet, so I'm going to continue and go ahead and just finish this up. Okay, so I've taken it off except for on the top. I'd have to undo the whole bodice part for that to happen. And I will be doing that anyway because I need to take the boning out, but right now I'm just gonna leave it and I wanna try it on. So this is it on now. You can still kind of see an imprint of it. I think if I steam it, it might come out cause it's kind of just like wrinkled fabric right now. Wondering now what I wanna do with the top. One thing I know I'm gonna do next is take this tool layer that is kind of sunken low on this and then I'm gonna bring it up like four inches so that it's higher and like right after the corset rather than being like down at my hips if that makes sense. Okay next step is I think I'm going to probably take out the top boning to like this point. I'm gonna do some scary stuff now. Um, I'm gonna seam, seam rip this top and then, I mean, I could just cut it, but that's terrifying. 
Um, I think I'm gonna seam rip the top part first, get the boning out, and then try it back on, mark it where I wanna cut it, and then do the thing. Yeah, I'm scared. Okay, so I just cut the boning by this much, which I think is the correct amount. I was kind of just going based on the shape that it had, so it has a little bit of a curve still from the bust. Um, I'm gonna try to just push it back down now to where it should be. And then I'm gonna try the dress back on. I think that's a good spot to where I push the boning down because now I can kind of fold this over, which is what I think the spot that I want it to be at. There are two more panels on each side of boning, so I'll need to go through and cut those down as well. I think no matter what, this will have to go down at least a button or two, probably two buttons. So I'll still need to cut the same amount. Okay, let's go. Okay, boning is out from the top, so now I can completely flip this over, or I should be able to. Oh my gosh, there's another boning and I totally missed it. Okay, well let's just see what we have so far. I'll have to go in and get this last one. There's another one. There's two more on each side. Okay, but let's just take a look and see if that was the right length. Yeah, because now this is like at my waist. And then this will go down, and this will probably be like four, four buttons lower. Okay, so we need to get the boning out of the rest of those ones that I missed, and then we can reevaluate. Okay, I think I have all the boning out now. After this, I'm gonna take this tool layer, hike it up here to underneath the corset kind of top. I originally wanted to add straps too, so. Hmm, I don't know, maybe off the shoulder is going to be better. <sighs> okay, so next step is, I don't know. <laughs> I think next step I'll just cut the top of this off and then see what I'm working with. I'm going to take all these things out. Yeah, I'm going to just play around. Okay, don't freak out. <laughs> um, I've been messing around with the skirt, so, and the top. Okay, so I folded the top down like pretty much what we took out of the boning. And then I put the little decal back on to the top and just like tied it so I could kind of see what that would look like because it was intriguing to me. It looked kind of like some of the reference pictures I was looking at. And then I was messing with the skirt. I was like, should I lift the tool up? Um, so like I lifted the top layer of the dress, kind of just folded it under because this is kind of like a corset top. And then, obviously, I can't tuck all of the skirt underneath. Either have this be some kind of, like, tail, or cut it here, fold it under, just have a corset top, and then a tool bottom. And then just the whole skirt get rid of. Well, if I do that, I can't, like, undo it. I mean, I might be able to add it back, but this is all, like, one piece right now, so... I just think this looks kind of fun, and it's very different from what the dress was originally. I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. Kind of want to just try it. And if I mess up and I hate it, I can probably make something out of this whole skirt as like a little party dress, probably like a little slip or something. I'm going to look at the back of this and see how deep it goes, because I think the zipper is going down really far. It might kind of mess with things. I'll have to look up how to end a zipper. It's very like Degas vibes, like ballerina, which I'm liking. Okay, so yeah, the zipper goes down pretty far. I'm going to... Uh, they leave an opening for the tool, which I'll need to sew up. But I'm also going to need to seam rip the lining so that it stops where the rest of it stops. Like where the start of the corset starts. That way this is like down. Yeah, and then I'll need to sew this back up together so it's whole. And then sew this together so it's whole. And then I think we'll be in business. <sighs> that might happen another day. <laughs> okay, it's a new day and I've decided I'm just gonna do whatever I want. And we're gonna go ahead and try to just remove the top layer of the skirt and just have tool exposed 
So what I'm going to need to do is remove the lining from the zipper and then sew up the lining, sew up this tool, and then we will see where we are then. I think we have seam ripped to where we need to seam rip to. Okay, I think we have one more button and then we'll be at the end of this kind of corset. Yeah, so that's the end. These two would fold in to be sewn together. I'm just gonna do it all by hand. And then this would be sewn together as well. And it doesn't look too shabby right now, but we'll see once we cut this layer off. It's the scary part. I'm gonna go a little lower than I should just to make sure I have enough space to do a hem up under. Oh my gosh, I'm so scared. I've never torn up a dress this much, so I'm a little, like, nervous about it. This, in my mind, is going to be under, flipped under, like so. But before I do that, I would like to finish off this part, this kind of top layer. I just cut through the zipper, so I need to, I need to get, like, the end piece so that I can um, actually use this. I might just use a piece of glue too for now. But the idea is that this is all up, 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 up. That's the idea. But I don't really know what to do next, so. Okay, I'm gonna sew this piece, the lining together, and then the tool together. That's a good next step. And then I'll figure out what I'm doing. I keep thinking that this dress was probably like $10,000. Just because it was couture, custom made, silk, made in New York. And then I'm just hacking at it like this. I'm just going to pretend I'm really good at sewing. So that I don't feel so bad. Okay, so I've sewn the layers of tulle together, so now they won't have a hole, I guess, and the lining, and you can't really tell, which is nice. So um, I might go to the fabric store and just get another layer of tulle, maybe a couple, but I don't really want to. <laughs> um, I think I'll just stick with the tool I have. Um, now I need to figure out how I'm going to do this part, because the corset's gonna be like this, and then these need to raise up. So I'm wondering if I should cut them off and maybe have this be a skirt and this be a top. I think that would be the easiest thing to do. Okay, have it pinned. It's pretty rough. I think I'm gonna try to do a pretty standard stitch around the hem, and then I might have to do a double stitch. And I'm just gonna do everything by hand. I don't know if I already said that, but this is gonna be all by hand because I don't wanna mess with getting my sewing machine out and breaking the needle multiple times. Yeah, it's gonna be a labor of love. Okay, I'm back from the store, and then I wanted to kind of put on this skirt to see what I need to do with it. So because I'm raising it up to higher than it used to be, I have extra in the back, like quite a bit. So I think I might go through and do a long stitch, cinch it up so that this is now like kind of crinkly, or what I could do since I want to wear it like as a skirt and not like attached necessarily, 
I can fold it over and make a tunnel for some elastic to go into. That way it should kind of be held up on its own and secured to me. I think I'll try that and see what happens. But in terms of the top, I think it fits well. It looks nice. Like I like how there's some like extra fluff because then the puffy skirt is gonna look good kind of in the back. It like has space to go out. And I don't know if I actually need to change the top because when I had it on before, I like would hike it up a lot and then it looked odd. But now that it's just like at its normal level because I don't need to change the waist at all, like it's fine. It's still a little big up here, but I'm wondering if I put like a push-up bra on underneath that it will fill out a little more. Yeah, I don't know. I saw something too that was like, was like a top that kind of went over the top of your like bust and then you kind of wear it like a sleeve so that you have an off the shoulder look. This is too delicate for that, um, but I could use tool. I just don't know. I was also thinking of putting something around the waist to tighten it a little more. I'm gonna do a skirt first because I'd rather that worked than figure out the top. So when I wanna make a folded kind of hem here, it's gonna be very small. So I cut the elastic that I had in half, like lengthwise to make it skinnier, to try to help with that. And it's still gonna be super tight. So I'm gonna just do the best that I can and see what happens. Okay, so I finished the edges of this kind of corset. This is gonna be higher. It's gonna be like this kind of vibe, but underneath. I should probably put the skirt on before I put the corset top on. I think it lines up pretty well. It has a little bit where I need to go a little bit higher in the back. Yeah, I need to tighten the skirt at the waist a little bit. But for the most part, I think it looks pretty decent. So the next part I was wondering about was should I have like a big sash here with a bow in the back? And I was thinking with this fabric, should I put bows on it? Should I change the top? Let's put some shoes on and then see. Okay, you should be able to kind of see what shoes what we're working with. I didn't buckle them, but these are the shoes I'm gonna wear down the aisle, so I assumed I'd be wearing them dancing. It's coming off very Carrie Bradshaw. It's hard to say what I should do. I don't know. I'm gonna look at the tool one more time. What if I just did big bow? I mean, I don't think I'm gonna be wearing the crown like all night dancing, but I just wanted to see what it looked like with the dress. I think it looks cute. I like it. It's very <laughs> what I would have imagined my teenage self wearing if I was like getting married or just like pretending to be a princess. It feels very princess and I like that. <sighs> okay, I don't think I'm done. This still bothers me with how big it is. And even with like a different bra, it still, I think is unflattering. I think I am gonna go ahead and try to do a sweetheart like this. I just think it'll help with the extra room and just give a little bit more interest to the top. And this is the boning, so I might have to take out even more of that boning. And then I also think I'm gonna try to sew the skirt to the top. Um, I think if I do it here, I'm definitely not going to have to like extend the zipper all the way to the skirt because if I can get it over my head now, then I would be able to get it over my head with a skirt on it. I would just cut off the excess at the top. Um, and since it's already scrunched, I can just go ahead and sew like it is now. I don't have to go in and gather all the fabric because I already did that. Yeah, this just feels a little bit more finished if I do something here. Also, I tried all of these like 
little hooks and stuff. And I can get them on, but I really, really think they're super hard to get on. Like they're super far away from the buttons and even so like if they were closer, they're still hard to get on because they're like barely big enough to go through the buttonhole. So as much as I like the way that looks, I think I'm just going to sew it down instead onto the zipper and get rid of all of these loops. So I'll still have the buttons, but they won't be connected with the loops anymore. I just want to be able to get in and out of this like dress easy. So I think this is just going to be too complicated and too time consuming. All right, so I just did a pretty simple stitch right in the center or as close to the center as possible. And yeah, I took out the boning. So now it stops about here, which I think is good because it allows me to have boobs. Um, and I don't think it interferes with the pleat now. So I think this looks a lot better. It's more flattering, I think, looking, and it also just fits me a little bit better. I am thinking now that I might do straps with it. Um, but I'm going to go ahead and sew this to the skirt so it's all one piece before I do that. Okay, I have sewn the skirt to the top. It was really easy to get on, so that was good. But I do have this like kind of dip here, which is interesting. One success though is I did most of the like extra like pleating of the skirt fabric in the back. So it has this really nice like volume that goes like straight out. I think that looks really good. And then I have less volume in the front so I can like actually dance with someone. But I think I have this like kind of dip in the fabric because I didn't cut out any of the extra fabric in the skirt on the top from where I sewed it. So I'm thinking once I do that, the elastic won't be there anymore and it won't cause a dip in the front. But now I'm thinking how I want to tie this, incorporate it, and I have a couple options. I can put it at the base of the top and then have it come down as like a really low bow, which I think looks cool from the back, but I don't think it's very flattering from the front because it's like highlighting a wider part of my body than I would normally want to. So another option would be to tie the back still and have it be at my natural waist, which looking at that, I think that looks nice. Like it's definitely better at my natural waist. Or I can tie it in the front kind of like how I was planning on it. So I can do that and have it be in the middle and then just kind of draped down with the extra fabric. And then they could just kind of flow around, but then it also kind of hides my belly in a way that I think looks semi-pregnant. <laughs> so the other option is to just twist it to the side and have it be like a one-sided thing, which I might keep it in line with the seam. I think I'm liking the side tie the most. Covers a little bit of the front, but I'm still considering maybe adding a layer of pink tool on top. I'm also wondering if I should add straps and they would be tool straps, because that's the fabric that I have. But I could also just leave it strapless because it is boned, my boobs aren't gonna fall out. This might slide down a little bit because it's still kind of big, but not by that much. And the tie at the waist really helps secure it at my waist. I'm gonna be something like this, but with fabric that's not like ripped. <laughs> so something like that. It wouldn't really provide a lot of support. It'd be more like decor because it's just tool. I kind of think it might be cute because I could lower it down too and it could be like off the shoulder. I think I'll try it but first I'm going to I think I'm going to cut off all of these hoops so that I don't have to try to get into this and hoop it because I've done that one time and it wasn't even when it was on me it was when I was on the mannequin and that was really difficult. Actually I think I'm going to do the hoops and then I might just show you the final look <laughs> when I'm done so that there's some sort of a reveal.
Well, I finished it and I still have a couple days until my wedding, so it all worked out. I am so pleased with how this dress turned out. I thought it would be just okay. And I'd be like, oh yeah, this is a comfortable dress. I can dance in this. But I actually really like this dress. I think it's super cute. It's kind of exactly what I wanted it to be. And I just feel like a beautiful Dega Dior princess. I'm so excited to dance in this on my wedding day. And I just, I'm very surprised it turned out this well. <laughs> Considering I haven't sewn like anything ever that's like this. I made one dress in seventh grade that had a similar silhouette, but that was the only dress I've ever made besides this. The total cost for this dress was $47. It was $40 for the dress from the thrift store. And then I just spent $7 on like tulle and that was it. I just used a needle and thread and hand sewed everything so there weren't really any other costs associated. This is definitely better than any other dress I could find for $47. Um, they definitely wouldn't have this much poof is what I'll say. And since my wedding ceremony dress is quite chic and slim fitted and modern, I definitely wanted to go vintage for my actual like dancing dress and I think this is just perfect. I'm so excited! Let me know your thoughts in the comments. How do you think I did? I know I'm not a professional sewer or even close to an amateur sewer in any capacity. Um, I just dabble so this is what comes from dabbling sometimes. I definitely want to make more sewing projects in the future especially this summer. Um, so hopefully I can do a couple more videos like that this year. I have a couple other wedding videos that have come out or will come out, so I'll put them all in a playlist and link that below. If you like this video, please like and subscribe. I make videos every week about style, fashion, thrifting, and uh, kind of sometimes whatever I want, <laughs> but it's mostly those kind of topics. I hope you all have a fabulous day and I will see you next week with another video. Tschüss!